Just Outdoors is brought to you in part by Jervalin Hardware Hank, Deer River. Jervalin Hardware offers a broad selection of paints and sporting goods and a complete line of plumbing and electrical supplies. Jervalin Hardware, 108 Main Avenue, Deer River. Hi, my name is Tom Chapin and welcome to Just Outdoors ICTV. This is a program to bring you the bare facts about the woods, the waters, and wildlife of Itasca County. And boy, do we have a show today. Uh, we're going to talk about canoeing, from the basic canoeing to the professional canoeing. And we have a professional canoeist with us, Al Rudquist. Welcome to the show, Al. Thanks, Tom. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. we got other guests coming later and we'll be introducing them. But right now, Al, we're gonna be talking about some basic canoeing here. We're okay. We're into the professional canoeing that you've been involved with for 45 years. But I started out with my dad in the Boundary Otters when I was 10 years old, and that just sort of got it started. But fundamentally, it's just a progression, but it all starts in the same spot. Starts, yes, and I remember when you were, I tell you, I remember when you were about eight years old, uh, there was a race uh, along the river here Okay. And uh, I happened to be in that race, and I, I actually raced with your dad as a partner. Wow. I, yes. And, and, and I don't remember that because I was watching, eight. So okay. That's a long time. So both of us have been involved in canoeing, basic canoeing, some professional canoeing in my background, but you went hog wild on this thing all the way. And you're still doing it. I still do it, you know, a little less now that I'm older and have a job, but I still <laughs> go to Florida and train in the spring and race eight or ten times in Minnesota and, yeah. you know, once in a while make a big trip out of state. And yeah. Well, it's great. I mean, uh, you know, you, you can't say enough about the sport. We both know what it means to have a good canoe, be out on the water, enjoy the environment, and actually be in competition to it. It's, right. just, it's just an amazing sport. and it, Keeps you, keeps you in shape. It does. Okay. It, you yeah. know, the more you work at it, the better shape you get, too. Uh, and, and you better be in shape if you're going to compete. Right? It helps. You, it, it helps. helps. Yeah, yeah. It helps a lot. Because <laughs> let, let's talk about that a little bit. The professional races, uh, you can go from a uh, one-hour sprint, which almost is a sprint for a professional race, mm -hmm. to eight hours, 17 hours. Right. right. You know, some of the big races in North America, there's one in Michigan, one in New York, and one in Quebec. You know, there's an eight-hour day. Michigan has an overnight race that's 16 hours. So you have to be ready to go for a long, long time and go hard the whole time. Yeah. And, and they don't really pay a great big uh, fee, do they? No, it's I mean, not. It's almost a, pays for your... Uh, you almost yeah, pays for your trip is yeah. kind of what you're doing. You're not doing it for the money. You're doing it for the sport, enjoyment yeah. of the sport. Yeah. Okay, I thought there would be a, no better person than to start out to show the public a basic canoe. We'll get into the racing canoe later. Okay. And the side canoe and other other types of watercraft. Okay. But let's take a look at a basic canoe. Now everybody knows what a 17 foot Grumman is. Right. We started out with those. I mean, everybody had a aluminum craft or a Grumman 17 foot, and they were heavy. You know, and I still have one. I still use it for duck hunting. I use it for ricing. I use it for going across the lake. They're indestructible. They. That's why they're still not around. tippy, mm -hmm. and they're a great canoe for just noodling around in. Right. And I guess they've progressed a lot to a canoe like this. This is a basically a family canoe. This is a little wider canoe than some of the Kevlar's. But there's, this is 17 foot. Mm -hmm. And what a, what a great canoe for two people or a family to go out and just enjoy canoeing. Right. It's, it's light. Probably doesn't weigh much more than 35 pounds. There's nothing to it. Um, 
and and you know it's it's something that uh, is really kind of indestructible too if you take care of them. You know, there a Kevlar with canoe like this. If you the sun is very hard on them because it's made with resin, and resin if you set it in the sun eventually gets brittle and deteriorates. But if you take good care of, them, don't leave them in the sun. You know, I have a Kevlar canoe at home that's 19 years old that I still race here and there when I go to Canada. You know, this so. canoe, and if you if you kind of get into it uh, and, and take care of your canoe, you don't have to set it on anything hard that's going to scratch it. You, it's light enough you can pick up and just set it in the water and get yep. into it. Or on a grassy area like this, and that's all this that's where this canoe has been. It's never been on a hard surface, and they'll last forever. Then. That's so, true. And, and they're very maneuverable. You can get different types. You can get uh, little narrower ones. You can get ones with a keel. Uh, great canoes. Right, this is a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. It's a nice canoe for people who aren't necessarily really familiar with canoeing. Yes. It's a canoe that will work to go on a two or three day boundary or five day boundary waters. You can carry a couple packs. Yep. There's a yoke right here. There's a yoke for portaging. Put the pads on yeah. there. It comes with pads. Most mm -hmm. of these canoes, you just screw them right on there. And so it's ready to go. You could pick that up. Uh, the average person just flip it right on your shoulders, no problem. Okay, now along with this is equipment. Right. And one of the best, the only equipment you're really going to use is the, the paddle. It's the paddle, right. Well, let's, let's talk about basic paddles. Uh, these are basic paddles. And this is what you can buy for 10 or 15, 20 dollars. Yep. They're heavy. Mm -hmm. um, they're uh, almost indestructible. I mean, you're not going to be able to hurt them in anything. You can push off, you can hit rocks with them. Right, especially the plastic and with the yes. aluminum shaft. That yeah. one, you know, you have to really try to probably yeah. break that. And so, yeah. you know, there, there's all kinds of different paddles uh, like this. The wooden paddles, you can buy all different uh, sizes and kinds and lengths. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what are you limiting yourself? How are you limiting yourself when you get these types of paddles compared to what else is available? You know, I, th I think the, the biggest thing is their weight. Just if you're going to spend any amount of time paddling or lifting, those paddles are going to weigh, you know, 14 ounces, maybe a pound. Yeah. And that's a lot of weight when you consider you're in and lifting it out of the water at the end of the day. I think well, that's 2, a thousand times like this. You're lifting that. That's right. You know, time. but they're inexpensive. If you're going yeah. to be out in the lake, if you're going to go paddle and not go very far, they're perfectly adequate for what you're doing. If you're going to decide you're going to go for a month long trip down an Arctic river, I think you're going to want to spend a little more money on your paddle just because it's a lot of extra strokes to take. You don't have to be a professional out there if you're going to have fun in a canoe. No, you don't. So these, these are going to be fine. Right. You're going to want to use them. And what you see is you should uh, make sure you store these. Put them off their wood, store them, get them keep out of the weather. And keep a coat of varnish on them coat so of that varnish, they. Otherwise they'll warp yep. and they'll start to split. And so, not bad. You know, you, you can use these. Mm -hmm. But then you can really progress. Then you can progress to, to graphite, graphite, which is weighs about as much as a can of soup, about eight ounces. Well, this is the light one. This weighs five and a half. <laughs> In your uh, dreams, Tom. <laughs> oh, well, okay, well, here you go. <laughs> it's not very heavy. It's not very heavy. Right. Oh, that one, yeah, that, yeah. this is the lighter one. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, unbelievable as far as strength and lightness. Uh, when you hand this to somebody, it's always the same reaction. Same reaction. They go like this, Yep. and what is this? It, it's just so light, you hardly... You barely can feel the weight. Actually. Well, the average person has never seen one. No. And so, like yeah. you say, anybody that you show one to, they, they look at you and they see them and they look at them because they're kind of odd yeah. and they can't believe how light they are. There's probably no more than a dozen of these even in Grand Rapids. Probably not many more than that, right? No, you know, there's probably, probably half a dozen enough for the have one. And that means they don't give them away. They don't give them away, <laughs> no. I no. mean, these are two to three hundred dollars a piece. But I'll tell you, if you're racing, this is the only thing to have. Yes. If you're just canoeing, you can get by with those. But if you're going on a longer trip, or you want to be a little more efficient. Mm -hmm. You get a lighter canoe, not an aluminum canoe, and you get paddles that are light. You're you're going to pay more for the lighter paddles. It's just, right. Uh, uh. And these paddles, you have to be a little more careful with them. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have a paddle. The one I'm using today is 15 years old. 
literally, uh, and it, it's beat up, it's patched, and it's stuff, but, you know. But you're not pushing the canoe but, off on a But rock. you're not pushing you. You have to use care with them, and they'll last forever. They'll last forever. Yeah, and they're, amazing. fundamentally, they're zero maintenance unless you do yes. something to them. There's no varnish, no chipping, no nothing you have to do. Okay, now let's talk about the paddle itself and the curve. These are curved. These are straight paddles. Okay, now we, you and I both know the advantage to having a curved paddle. Right. Explain it. When you're taking a stroke, let's see, which way is the best way to show that? This way. And when you have a bent paddle as you're reaching out in front of you, you can see this part of the paddle is square to the water. And as you're coming through here and ending, you're still square, you're very efficient in the water where you end your stroke. When you have a straight paddle, and you take your stroke. When you get back to here, suddenly now this part of the paddle is lifting up in the water. You're not being as efficient with your stroke and it's just harder work. That's the reason for the bend is efficiency. You, you really don't, the less water you lift with your paddle. The more you're going forward. The more you're going forward. Right. And so if you can get zero lift by the time that paddle comes out of the water perpendicular, mm -hmm. You're not lifting hardly anyone. That's right. Your, all your energy is going into pushing the water, getting the resistance. Well, pressure. right, and, you, and your whole point is you don't want to push the water. You want to anchor your paddle in the water and move the canoe. This is, you know, the bent paddle is better at anchoring in the water and getting more motion into the canoe rather than in the water. After all, all the years I've been involved with paddling, I, I really have a hard time using one of these anymore. <laughs> Although recreation, I'll get in and paddle with somebody and that's yeah. fine. But boy, I tell you, once you get this bent paddle, and they make bent paddles in wood too. Yep. Um, and they're they're hundred dollars, right? Yeah. So you go up to Ely, and that's pretty much all they got. Yep. In there is uh, these bent paddles, and uh, so I guess we uh, you would recommend a bent paddle. I will. I will. I always use a bent paddle. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason like no. once in a while you end up with a straight one in your hand, and it's yeah. fine. But well, any time you, you would never use a straight paddle. Not unless they make you. <laughs> okay. And I've been to some races where they provide paddles too. Remember so. the old days when we raced and uh, they forced you to use aluminum canoes? I still go. Tin, can tin cans, yep. Tin can races. There's some races I go to in Canada that still do. We still race our 17 foot Grumman. And jump in and oh yep. boy. It's, uh, but everybody's like the same canoe. Mark, but everybody's the same. So it, yeah. It's yep. It's like any sport, right? Yep. Supposedly. Keep the rules fair for everyone. That's right. I guess what we want to show is just a few techniques out there. Um, that would enable you to be more efficient and enjoy canoeing more. Um, isn't it true that it, the more you, you know what to do, the more you enjoy the sport and the fast, farther you can go with less energy? Absolutely. One thing I've always noticed is when you see people who've never paddled before is they can't go straight. So that's sort of the, the fundamental thing that makes it fun. I mean, if you go out and try to go across the lake or out to the island or wherever and you can't get there, canoeing is not going to be fun for you. But when you can learn to steer, that's the most important thing to making things and enjoyable. You, know, you can learn to steer in like five minutes of training. You really can if you do the right thing. If you have somebody that can that tell you what to do, you absolutely. What to do, and you do what you're told mm -hmm. right. you can do it. And there are conditions that make it difficult. Oh, yeah, you know, you get out there in a big yeah. wind or waves and it's always harder. But Another thing I see, and you do too, when people are paddling, one person's paddle's going in and the other paddle's going in like this. You want to synchronize yep. your stroke. Yep. Stay and in time. You, you just if you do that, you're, you have increased your efficiency almost 100%. I always like to think about it. If we're trying to push your car out of the ditch, Tom, and I push on one fender, and you push on the other one in opposite times, you're not coming out of the ditch. If we push in the fender at the same time, yeah. we got a chance. Well, you're doubling, <laughs> yeah. your, you're you're doubling almost, your force. You're tripling your, yep. your, your energy going in. Yep. So the, the, the paddles in the same time, and then to steer the canoe, you can switch sides. Yep. We'll explain that. When we're in a race especially, we don't like to do any sort of strokes that are steering, you know, pushing the canoe sideways. We like to go all forward. So basically we take forward strokes six eight ten strokes on the side and then we switch sides so the canoe's always very gently you know snake and down the river if you look really closely but generally going straight frequently 
recreational paddles will use, you know, other types of strokes to go straight. This because you know, yeah, they used to call it the J stroke, the J stroke and the sweep the stroke and things. To but I noticed uh, when I was racing that the the, the the ball person was pretty much a lot of times was just steering the canoe. Ball person always has to help. Has you to know, help steer fu the canoe. fundamentally, you know, especially when we're racing, the stern person takes care of the big picture. You know, we're going from here to there, but the ball person sort of has to take responsibility for the close things, missing a log or where you're going on a corner, moving a foot this way or that way when things are really tight. Yeah, but the stern guy does a big picture, the ball guy does a little stuff. And there's, a, there's, there's techniques a ball person can use with this paddle yep. to pull that front end around this way or push it away. Yep. And boy, does that help. No canoe is ever going to go perfectly straight. Nope. They're... It'll, it'll wander around like this, but the more efficient you are, the less wandering you're going to do. Right. right? And, and so. the less wandering you do, the more efficient you are. It kind of goes hand in hand. So, it's, it's amazing how just a little bit of training can make you almost fall in love with this crap. Mm. Because all of a sudden, you have control of it. Right. And the hard part is you're trying to get your propulsive force for the canoe out of the water. It's not like you're reaching on something solid, so it's really important to learn, and that's something you have to do by feel, to anchor that paddle in the water and make it do what you want to. Yeah, yeah. this so, is your motor. That's your motor right so, there, yep. There you go. You want to give it a shot? And, Let's go uh, give it a whirl. Make a little circle out there? Yeah. I noticed one thing too, Tom. I see you're wearing a life jacket, yes. and I'm not. That's um, correct. Minnesota rules, Minnesota law, requires that every watercraft has a uh, legal life jacket in it for people. Um, it's not required to wear one in a canoe. Now, I know lots of people that are not comfortable and they wear them all the time. I think that's really important on a personal level. You know, I don't, I'm used to racing, it's hot, we're working hard, they're not comfortable, so I frequently don't wear one. I'm comfortable in a canoe, I'm comfortable in the water. There's a lot of people, A, if you're not a regular canoeist and you're not really good in a canoe, wear your life jacket, no question, until you get very, very confident. I never let somebody who, even if I go out with someone, even if I'm not wearing a life jacket, I'll make them wear it because tipping over is scary, it happens fast, and there's no reason to be out there and be in danger. Um, so what it amounts to is really be aware of yourself. Have your life jacket, if you're not wearing it, have a cushion, have something handy that if you do tip over, your canoe, That's all one of the federal regulations with all these canoes is they have to have 25 pounds of buoyancy, whether it's an aluminum canoe, a Kevlar canoe, a racing canoe. So your canoe will always be buoyant also. So when, whenever you have that, you have a built-in something to catch this, when this you is tip your over. Life jacket when you tip over also. It could be, canoe. yeah. Oh, sure. Just hang yeah. Under. And be aware of your capacities. Right. You know, if it's two foot waves out there, don't go. If it's a rapids that's something you haven't done before, don't go. I mean, it's very important to judge your capacity. And I remember one story, it was 1989. There was a race in Spokane, Washington. And the rule was you had to wear a life jacket. Oh, gee, I don't want to wear a life jacket. <laughs> so when you buy a life jacket that's going to be comfortable, the paddle are 100 bucks. So I bought my $100 life jacket and we jumped in the car. And we drove for, what, 24 hours to get to Spokane. Drove down the river, looked at the river. I said, where's my life jacket? <laughs> it was no question. The river's eight miles an hour, cold as ice. I was happy to wear a life jacket. Yep. So know your abilities, know the water you're in. Of course, I recommend everybody that gets in a watercraft wears a life jacket. And if you're canoeing, I understand your situation because mm -hmm. that's a professional situation. But if you get in a watercraft, even a, a pontoon boat, throw the, yeah. throw the life jacket on. It's I mean, easy to wear them. Yeah, and of course, a cushion is not considered legal for a life jacket. Right. It's, These are throwable that you have to have in a 16-foot boat or, boat or over. Right, you have but, but they are considered a life jacket. There's all kinds of life jackets uh, available. This happens to be a uh, inflatable. I don't even know I got it on. I mean, it's just nothing there. I, you know, I th think, do I have my life jacket? Well, yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. it, it will inflate when you hit the water, and you can also inflate it just with pulling the cord. And so I, I love it. It's just uh, the way to go. So, okay. Let's hit the water. Let's hit the water.
Okay, Chris, let's introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Krista Madison, and uh, I've been paddling all my life, but racing the last 15 years, uh, paddling boundary waters and just doing tripping and that kind of thing, until my friend Teresa Elto asked me if I wanted to do a, a citizen's race here in Cohasset. So I, I did that with her, and um, I met Al there, and uh, he has a race here in Grand Rapids called the Round Robin, which he asked me if I'd like to help out at, which I did, and uh, the rest has been history. So uh, we spent a lot of time together in life and in the boat, and uh, he's taught me probably 95% of what I know. Krista, I see you out uh, practicing a lot. Uh, and you, you, how often do you guys practice uh, for racing or just get out and generally canoe? Mm -hmm. It really varies from year to year with, you know, responsibilities, family and whatnot sure. that's going on. Um, so a little bit different. Al often will go in his solo boat, and, uh, but he and I probably generally try to get out three or four times a week. Okay. But that's well, uh, I, I know I see you a lot. Uh, are you conditioned, just trying to stay in condition, right? Uh, do you have any more races this year? Do you plan on any more races yeah, this year? Yeah, so Al's really, I see Al as the primary racer. I, I really love to train, but I don't race nearly as much as Al does. I'll do the Minnesota races, the local races, but I don't travel out east or do the bigger um, national races. Okay, so you, you actually assist Alan as a partner so he can also train yeah. during that time. It's more fun for him to go in a, in a tandem boat yeah. than always yeah. doing the solo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk, uh, we've talked to Al about uh, our connection over the years and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so you got into this about 15 years ago or so. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's just a great sport. In oh, it's, it's just... been out, and even though I've been doing it for 15 years, I am learning every year. And uh, we do a training in, in Florida every year. And that is phenomenal, where yeah. we train twice a day for two or three hours and paddle with fantastic yeah. Yeah. Uh, people from Canada and out east. And, yeah, you meet a lot of people. I, I know that the training is important. It seems like you, you can always, like you say, you can always learn something. I've talked to people that have a million, millions of strokes in, and they say they learn something new on every stroke. Yeah, very true. <laughs> that's, that's and the, from uh, every person you paddle with. Yeah, in, yeah. in position, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've been under uh, in, in races under all kinds of conditions. You've been out in all kinds of conditions. Weather is a real factor sometimes, isn't it? Mm -hmm, for sure, and because I'm a lighter person, wind can be a big yeah. issue um, affecting steering, our, our weight drift differences a lot anyway yeah. and then when you add the wind it can really make how it far have you gone to a race uh, as far as traveling miles traveling to get to yeah. a race yes um boy the furthest away I've probably been was oh, Wisconsin the oh, okay. oh the paw right oh, Canada. The paw. we went to the, the paw several years in okay, Canada that's, yeah, that's, that's 650 miles yeah so. that's, a, that's a big haul <laughs> it's been a while since we've been able yeah, to get okay. up there but that's but a favorite. Canada it, it, it's a huge sport in Canada oh fantastic and, and so yeah. for a guy like Al and then you two together uh, to compete with people that live it in their blood there uh it, it's amazing mm -hmm. and there's a lot of good racers in in the united states also yes and they come from many states don't they correct yep okay. a lot from the east coast but minnesota is one of the biggest ones is that minnesota correct? michigan is also michigan, okay. a major um yeah probably number of people michigan's yeah. very high on the yeah. list okay. yeah but more and more people are joining the sport um in minneapolis there's a rookie night every monday where people can go try it out and that has been a big entry for a lot of people. Well, tell us about that now again. So on Monday nights, I don't even know exactly where it is. Um, maybe these guys know more information, but uh, they have a rookies night where they will put you in a boat with an experienced paddler, and you get to um, you know have the experience in these fast racing boats. And um, you know a lot of people that go have no uh, former canoe experience, right. or they're very um, athletic in another yeah. sport. Yeah, you know, so it varies, but a lot of people do enter the sport by doing that rookie's yeah. night. 
and we're going to also talk about how the, the more you do this, the more efficient you get, and the less energy you expend, and the farther you can go. And canoeing, even though you're paddling all the time, turns out to be fun. It can be fun oh, recreationally. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, too. and I used to say, I don't want to go so fast. I want to have fun. And now I'm like, you can totally go it's fast just, and yeah. still see what's going on around you exactly. and be very nice and yeah. efficient with your stroke. Well, it's great to have you out here and uh, and talk to you about this. We have a local gal, Krista, here that is in a canoe a lot, okay. and uh, you'll see her around. And uh, if I suppose if any of the gals around oh, if anybody have any wants questions. To try it out, or come with us, we'll take you're them out. The, we you're the gal to call. We can use, Get absolutely. Get a hold of you because, uh, boy, uh, you, you're, you're living proof that you can do this sport. Oh, yeah. And uh, it doesn't matter what, you know, what age, what sex, uh, you're out there and you're in the nature, and that's a big thing. So. And, you know, it's like any sport or anything you do in life, persistence, that's practice, it. That's right. you know, keep doing it, and you get better. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we have another special guest and a special type of watercraft canoe, Marn Hagen. Welcome, Marn, to the show. Thank you. And you have been around. You're from Grand Rapids here. A lot of people know you as a, an athlete and a canoeist and a canoeer, I guess that would be the best. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, I guess where I want to start out with you is uh, let's do a little bit of history here. You've been paddling canoes and this type of watercraft for quite a few years. Right, I grew up marathon paddling with Al and a, and a group of kids out of uh, rural Robin Baker. He had a bunch of, of kids when we were uh, in high school and he brought us to races. So I grew up uh, marathon paddling and he was my marathon paddle coach. And Al was my first paddle racing partner. When you say marathon paddler, mm -hmm. Marathon rate, uh, canoeing, what is that? Uh, that was the boat that you uh, videoed oh. with Al and Christian. Okay, just and a racing canoe? A racing canoe, and, okay. so, and those races are, 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 are long, anywhere from an hour to 17, 18 hours long in multiple yeah. day races. Yeah, we... So that was my background until around 2010, which I, then I started getting into um, sprint, um, out, outrigger sprint training and uh, dragon boat racing. Okay, uh, just quickly, and then we'll get into this. I, I know Robin Baker was a, a real instigator and helped so many people around here. Right. And so many kids get involved. Well, you were one of those kids right. back then. Yep. And I will let people know that he was my a, a canoeing racing partner for uh, yeah. quite a few years. Good, great guy. And I still miss him. Me too. <laughs> Been gone a long t uh, while, but uh, he was a, sp a spectacular paddler. Right. He, uh, he, uh, when, I, when I got my job, I had to quit paddling for quite a long time. And, uh, but before that, he and I raced together. We went to races around, and uh, what a great teacher. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to throw that in there because a lot of people remember Robin, right. Robin Baker, and uh, yeah. and so that's what we're bringing up here. Yeah, I wouldn't be a paddler today if it we, wasn't we, And him. there's a lot of people around here who right. do that, yeah. Right. So um, I guess what I'd like you to do is introduce us to this type of watercraft. This, because I've never seen one of these before. Well, they're not very popular in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. This is a an outrigger canoe. They're very popular in Hawaii and on the West Coast and the East Coast of the United States. I train in one because I, I, to make Team USA, Dragon Boat Team, I have to have time trials and my time trials are in a boat like this. So, so you're really into this racing in these canoes? Right. This is a canoe? Yes. Okay. Um, are they basically a recreational canoe also or are they just strictly for racing? Uh, they could be a recreational canoe, but you might go swimming a lot. Okay, <laughs> so they're very unstable, generally. Yeah, until you get used to them. Until you get used to them. And of course, the reason for the outrigger is because you're paddling in some pretty big water, aren't you? Right, it's, so it's designed for surfing in the ocean, and I've never had the opportunity to do that. So. Okay, have you done the Mediterranean or anything like that? Nope, just the Mississippi and, Mississippi. and other race courses around the U.S. So. Yeah, okay. Um, so how, again, how long have you been doing this now since 2012, was it? 2010, I started dragon boat racing, and then in 2011, I started competing for the United States okay. Dragon Boat Team. Are you, are you also, with, uh, like the other folks we just interviewed, are you, are you practicing a lot? Yeah, I train at least six days a week from March till 
September, October until it's not safe to paddle anymore. So there's still ice out here when you're out here practicing? There's ice when I start yeah. and I quit before the ice comes okay. back on. Okay, when you're, when you're racing these, are there, are there certain states you go to that are more popular than others? Yeah, the, the West Coast and the East Coast states are... West Coast and East Coast, right. okay. Right. All right, uh, how many races do you do a year? Well, I do time trials in these, um, and I'll have, depending on the competition year, like next year I'll be trying out for Team USA which, to, to compete on a, a team going to Thailand. So I'll have uh, time trials in a boat similar to this in uh, Tampa in April, and then Philadelphia in uh, June. I wow. think in June, yeah. And so all my other training is, this is just for training, and then when I can, ever I can get into a dragon boat, I jump into a dragon boat. Okay. Do you meet a lot of people on the circuit that you know? Oh yeah, I know people from all over the United States now. And so you sometimes, yeah, those same people will come to a lot of these different races. Right. Okay, so you're competing against people more than once, these, these competitors. Right. Okay. Right. Now, I heard that you just came back from overseas. Right, I competed uh, at the club, Crew World Championships in Seged, Hungary, and I the cr crew I raced for was a, a crew out of Chicago called Windy City, and they're a really really good uh, team, and they asked me about four or five years ago to be part of their team um, because I'm obviously not from Chicago, and you have to be part of a, a local crew. But I've paid my dues, and I go to their time trials, <laughs> and I go to races with them, and I go to their camps, training camps. And uh, so they have invited me to be a part of their yeah. team, and so I competed there for a week uh, in the middle of July this year. A week in Hungary in the yeah. middle of July. Mm -hmm. What was the temperature over there? It was very hot, like 90 degrees. Well. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> it was hot. It was cold. And so, Again, any type time you have a sport like this, the endurance is the big thing. How, how long are those races in a boat like this? Well, that's it. These are sprint races. Uh, oh. So we had 200 meter races, which are really, really fast. Uh, 500 meter races, 1,000 meter races, and 2,000 meter races. Okay. Well, it's almost like the uh, canoes you see in the Olympics. Those right. are sprint races, yep. a lot of it's, those. It's sprint races. And exciting to watch. I mean, they're right. just incredible. Yeah. Do they have these type of boats in the Olympics? No. Nothing like this? Okay. No. No. So this is more of a select group of people that want to race these type right. around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have longer races? Not in one of these boats. Well, sometimes I go to marathon canoe races and I'll race this boat just to get a good workout in. Oh, okay. But I'm the only one in my category. <laughs> Your category like <laughs> yeah. that, okay. Yeah. Uh, are these tippy? Yes. Very tippy. Yes. Okay. They're even tippy with the, the sideboard on them. The side right. You know, I should, I'm very comfortable in it, so it doesn't seem tippy to me, but I was um, training a, a gal from Bemidji who wanted to try outrigger paddling and uh, she did pretty well, but she flipped over. We call it hooli. She did a hooli, <laughs> yeah. and so we got her upright. And so for me, it seems very stable. But if you're new to it, it it would be it would seem very tippy. I see these can be removed. Do you race occasionally with these not on? I don't think I would be able to. Oh, to, you, you, to, you wouldn't to be able to sit. Okay. I don't think I, I think I'd tip over. Yeah, you probably could if they were moving fast. Maybe. But, but, Maybe uh, Al could. Yeah. Okay. So this is a violent. Okay. Yeah. What we'd like to do. Uh, uh, okay. How fast are these compared to a marathon, a racing canoe? Um, are they a little faster? No, they're not. They're actually a little slower. They're actually a little slower. Mm -hmm. They look like they'd be faster. That's what everybody thinks, but they are. I, I know people who paddle both and they say they're slower. Okay. Not a lot, but okay. enough. I think maybe because it has the outrigger little drag. Yeah. And they seem long, but there's curve at both ends actually and because they're designed for surfing. So even though it seems like a long canoe, which would make it a faster canoe, it's designed to surf in the waves, so not all of my bottom of my boat is, is in touching the water right now. I see. Okay. Uh, well, um, how many strokes per minute do you average when you're paddling one of these? I know what it is in a marathon, right. between 60 and 85 strokes a minute. Uh, what about something like this? <laughs> same. About the same, because right. you're sprinting, so right. you're just giving well, it all out. If you're doing a 200-meter race, it'll be 
um, way faster pace, like 80 to 90. 80 to 90 strokes a yeah. minute. And That's then the up two there. kilometer race, you're more like in the 60, 65. Okay. So. so maybe we could have a little demonstration here where you could give us like something in between. Okay. In there, and we're going to go out and we're going to uh, have you go by us and have you head on, and we'll uh, we'll watch you at your at your best. All right. Sounds okay, good. Okay. Thanks. We were noticing that you were paddling left and right. Yes. Um, of course, isn't that the way you keep the canoe going straight? No, not no. in this boat. Not in that one. That has rudders. Ah, this has rudders. <laughs> right. Okay, there we go. So, That's a little bit different. Right. You keep it going straight with rudders. Anything else, Marin, you got? You want to say about the sport and the craft? Well, it's just fun to have a nice boat, whether it's an outrigger canoe or a nice boat like uh, like your tripping boat or Al's racing boat, just to enjoy the wonderful waterways we have yeah. here. I just love it. Yeah, we're so blessed here. I mean, yeah, every there's day. no place else in the country has a thousand lakes in one car. Right, and, <laughs> so. and I try to paddle as many different uh, bodies yeah. of water as I can around here. Beautiful. Just to Beautiful. Enjoy it all. Well, thank you so, very much for showing you. the demonstration, and uh, good luck in the future, and thank you. good luck the rest of the year. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you folks for watching Just Outdoors and remember, stay informed.